Hello and thanks for checking out another video from the How To Scholar. In this video, I'll show you how to name type 1 ionic compounds here. All right, so to get started, we have to just classify, I guess, what an ionic compound is. And an ionic compound is a chemical compound that involves two things, a metal and a nonmetal. All right, so that's what an ionic compound is, but what is a type 1 compound? A type 1 compound involves um, two things, like I said before. It involves a metal, but that metal is from groups 1, 2, or 13 on the periodic table, and it involves a nonmetal. Um, so the really interesting piece is when you're classifying between type 1 and type 2 ionic compounds, the cation or the metal is the thing that separates that. Whether it is in group 1, 2, or 13 means that it is a type 1 ionic compound. So these metals have only one charge. If we're looking at elements that are found in group 1, they have one valence electron, so their charge is going to be 1 plus when they lose that one valence electron. Elements in group 2 have two valence electrons, so they will become charged of 2 plus because they will lose those two valence electrons. And elements in group 13, they're still cations, they have three valence electrons and it's much easier for them to lose those three valence electrons to become um, a full valence shell, so they're going to have a 3 plus charge. All right. So when we look at the steps for naming ionic compounds of the type 1 variety, we're looking first at writing the name of the metal down. After that, you will write the root of the nonmetal, and you're going to end it with this suffix, this "-ide suffix." So let's go ahead and highlight that because that's important. All right? You'll end it with "-ide." And then afterwards, when you're naming, make sure do not use any capital letters. So it's all lowercase like you can see in this first example. All right, so the very first thing that we do related to our steps is we have NaCl. The metal is Na or sodium. The uh, Cl represents chlorine, but let's look how to name that now. So back to the first step, write the name of the metal. So Na is sodium. Notice lowercase here, and we write sodium out. The next step is write the root of the nonmetal. So if we're looking at the nonmetal, which is chlorine here, we write the root of that, which would be chlor, and we end that word with ide, the suffix ide. So this now becomes chloride, and the total name here for this compound, NaCl, would be sodium chloride. All right? Let's take a look at the second example you can see here is Al2S3. For this example, we start out by writing the name of the metal in um, no capitals, so it's aluminum here. The nonmetal is S, and that is sulfur. So we write sulfur, and the, the root of sulfur is sulf, and we say aluminum sulfide when we end the ide um, suffix there. Again, no capitals for either of these names, and both of those look good. So what I want you to do now is take 30 seconds to write out the um, name for the following compounds you can see below. NABR here and MGI2. If you need to, pause this video. Um, but we're going to jump right into it right now. Let's assume that 30 seconds uh, went up. So let's start by following these steps again. The very first step is to write the name of the metal. So if I'm looking at the metal, that would be here what we see in blue, Na, and that is sodium. So I'm writing sodium out, and it's lowercase. Be aware of that. Next, we're going to look at the nonmetal, which is in red here, and that is bromine. The root of bromine is brome, and we end it with the suffix "-ide." So our answer here for this name would be sodium bromide. All right, for the second one, what we're going to look at is over here, MgI2. All right, very quickly, let's focus on the nonmetal here. Or sorry, first, 
that you focus on writing the name of the metal as you see here in blue, which is Mg. That Mg stands for magnesium, lowercase. And after that, we're going to focus on the non-metal, which we can see here is iodine. And the right now, the two doesn't matter. That tells us that we have two iodines, but when we're naming type one ionic compounds, that doesn't make a difference. So we have the root of iodine, which is iode. And what we're gonna do is end it with the suffix ide. So this name now is magnesium iodide. I hope that video helped. If it did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and let us know in the comments below video ideas you'd like to see. And ultimately, we appreciate you watching and please subscribe to the How To Scholar for more how-to videos.